Assalamu alaikum wa la'ala, how are you? Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Once the target of hateful discrimination, two Muslim women now break down barriers by breaking bread. All of humanity, we're brothers and sisters. Making money is vital, but preserving culture is also valued at the city's oldest Tibetan gift shop. May all living beings have a joy and happiness. Forced to leave their homeland, a Syrian family becomes refugees, determined to reach Seattle. These stories and more are coming up next on City Stream. Hello, I'm Josephine Chang. Welcome to City Stream from Kabul Afghan Cuisine Restaurant in Wallingford. The dishes here are a taste of Afghanistan, an ancient culture dating back centuries to the time of Alexander the Great and before that. We'll speak to this restaurant's Afghan owner and learn more about the influences that shaped his cooking and his life. A good meal is also at the heart of this next story. You know, many Muslim refugees believe that if they can just make it to America, their lives will be good, prosperous, and safe. But since the 2016 election, some of those refugees believe that they are increasingly the target of suspicion and hate. Linda Byron reports on how two Seattle women are working to counter those negative perceptions and break down barriers by breaking bread. Halal branding, which means that the, the cow was killed the way prescribed by Allah, God. <laughs> Fatia Absia and Elise Aden are cooking up some favorite dishes from their homeland of Somalia. Somalia, we used to eat this kind. I still eat it. <laughs> they came to America years apart. Raised in Mogadishu, at 14, Fatia ran away from home seeking refuge in a promised land she'd only seen in Time magazine. I was fascinated because there were, you know, people from all shades of humanity. And I was like, oh my God, that's where I belong. That's where I want to go. Elias was just eight when she emigrated. I just remember being a kid like, I'm going to America, like thinking it was Disneyland. They each found their way to Seattle, but didn't meet until shortly before the 2016 election just as Donald Trump was demonizing Muslims on the campaign trail. And then when he won, I did cry. I thought, who voted for him and are these people my friends? I almost felt like I couldn't breathe. I was so scared. Anxiety became action. The women invited Muslims and non-Muslims to share a meal to promote understanding any and all questions on the menu. This is your chance, you know. It's now or never. People started calling us, you know, saying, we want to have dinner with Muslims, you know, where do we sign up? And so we knew right there and then we had something special. Assalamu alaikum wa la'ala, how are you? Good. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Soon, they were holding dinners twice a month, and 15 had become 50. By last October, at the Cooking Up a Little Faith dinner at Uber's Seattle headquarters. What's in here, let me see. This is Turkish eggplant, chicken kebab. This is lamb kebab. I made this one. This is our famous, um, we call it United uh, Beans of America. <laughs> While they bring in food from many restaurants, there's only one rule at the table. Muslims and non-Muslims, please. You have to sit together. Oh. That's the whole idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when, we come, when we come back, mix and, you know, Get to know somebody new. I, I know unless you wear the hijab, it's hard to tell whether you're Muslim or not. <laughs> My name is Yusuf. 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 So can you guess what Yusuf is? Uh, Joseph. Oh, is it really? Yep. Yeah. Nice to meet you, too. They share a meal. Oh my God, this is so great. This is so great. This is so great. 
conversation flows. Talking about where we grew up. <laughs> Every time I meet a new person or a new American or somebody. Respect grows. All of humanity, we're brothers and sisters, but we've been close. There's so much commonality. We have both like lived in the Midwest for a while. So can you say your native name again? Nahase Hise. Nahase Hise. It means sweet sage woman. Work. I work here, I do work. Safety. Yeah, otherwise they're walking at night. Politics. Religion. I'm an atheist. What is it like to be a young Muslim? And I'm coming at it from the standpoint of being Jewish. Typically taboo subjects break wide open. Why don't we eat more? I just don't like it anyway. <laughs> People think it's a violence religion and you know everybody is like, oh my god, you're Muslim, you're just crazy, you're gonna bomb me. If you're just scared and that's all you know and nobody's helping you know who the good guys are, how are you gonna know? So then you're gonna stay scared. Why do I wear the scarf? That would be like a main question. And I just say that it's the, it's the choice. I can offer information that gives Muslims a deeper understanding where I'm coming from and, and vice versa. I think it's incredibly important to just get to know people beyond like preconceptions, all of that, um, and just chat with them. I think eating is a great thing to do while you're doing that because that's sort of like, I think, something that everyone can relate to. Fatia and Ilais understand what it's like to live in both worlds. Before putting on the hijab six years ago, Fatia was once an aspiring actress in L.A. I feel like I'm being embraced and hugged all the time, you know, it, it feels really, really good. And I feel more beautiful. I never thought I would say that, but I feel so much more beautiful having this on. Elise, a lawyer, only put on the hijab four months ago. I've had people tell me, I can't believe you talk so much, because they assume that my hijab means I'm a quiet, demure woman and so I do want to break the stereotypes and I think this is a way for me to do that. People have jeered at them, threatened them. Life would be easier if they uncovered their hair. But they're committed to their faith and to helping others understand it. I always knew I wanted to do something because I felt like when people look at me differently or treat Muslims differently it's because they don't know us or they don't know Muslims because to know us is to love us. They've seen Eat With Muslims dissolve suspicion and turn strangers into friends. They believe it will work anywhere in America. One dinner at a time, showing that they're not Muslims cooking up trouble, but they are cooking up a good meal. Nice Thank to you. meet you. Thank you. People are going to gain a lot, not to mention they're going to eat good food and have a good conversation. <laughs> We're just like everybody else. We care about love and life and humanity. This is great. We don't hate anybody. Thank you. Thank you. In addition to running Eat With Muslims, Fatia is a filmmaker and Elis is a social activist. Recently, they raised $25,000 through a Kickstarter campaign to take their dinners on the road and produce videos for their website, eatwithmuslims.org. Just ahead, looking for a unique gift? Maybe one infused with deep meaning? The story behind this Greenwood Boutique as CityStream continues. You know, a couple of miles to the north on Greenwood Avenue is the city's oldest Tibetan boutique gift shop. Owner Rinzing Kinke has been there 20 years and he says business is good. But what he really cherishes is the opportunity to share his heritage and culture with those who are curious enough to stop by. Producer Leila Kazmi has the story.
My name is Rigzim Dinke. I was born in Tibet. I have this shop for last 20 years. I'm here pretty much seven days a week. It brings me joy being able to share some of the unique quality that lies in Tibetan culture and Buddhist philosophy. I love these two. Oh yeah, these are also a temple guard. They don't hang on the top of the door, but they sit on the side of the door. Uh, greeting, greeting, to. yeah, greetings. Yeah. Uh -huh. I started in 1994 in Olympia, small business from my apartment, like calling friends, offering food, telling stories. That's how I started with about 100 carpets. I was able to help the same village that I lived in, in India. Then me and my wife, we moved to Seattle, and the first thing I told her, let's, let's open a small shop. And then I saw this really small, tiny place, and the window was broken, door was crooked. I said, this I can't afford. <laughs> we named it Pemakarpo. It's a white lotus. If you look, all the Buddha's image, they sit on lotus throne. Lotus grow in musty water, but it does not carry that mustiness. This is called 100 petal lotus. It's very, very traditional. And these are all hand woven by Tibetans in India, Nepal. I try to buy as much as possible from Tibetan uh, monasteries or Tibetan communities. So that prayer flag is made by people who what, how to read that prayer. Fair Trade is organization, and they go to Nepal, India, Pakistan, uh, Thailand, and they, they produce uh, small, small things uh, that pay well to the artists. So I buy from them. Basically, buying and selling things a little bit with conscious, not necessarily care complete on profit. So whenever I go personally, I, I buy uh, not the like massive and cheapest one. I just go uh, to particular people who are uh, who have less, who have a smaller shop, and who are older, who are disabled. I buy from them. This this one's shop from Ludiana. I buy from there was older men and women. They did they, they have the smallest shop again. I cleaned them up when they were so happy. <laughs> also a lot of art, I support Tibetan Art Institute in Dramsala, which also educates a lot of uh, newly arrived Tibetans, men and women, old and young, any, anybody. These are my calligraphy. I found the richness of Tibetan writing. We have four different writing, for example, this one is a big letter. And this one, it, around high school and after high school, we write them. And this one is very fast writing. This one I always write, it's called Shempe. Shempe means benefiting other. I wrote it almost like effortless. This is from Fair Trade. A lot of times they ask me this symbolic. What is mean by this mala? Why is it power beat? So I get a chance to say, yeah, you can call power beats, but actual power is within you, I tell them. But these are stepping stones, how to find that. I bought this uh, just really cheap Indian you know, gods and goddesses poster. They were selling on the street. I could easily go to a factory and buy a lot cheaper, but I purposely bought from this woman. She has three kids running around and on, on a footpath. So I, I, I looked like it's not more than $300 entire, if I buy all of that. So I kind of sometimes buy like that. She was so happy, she packed it before I, I'm gonna go home and cook for the kids. Being able to live in community, practice what you believe, and small, small handicrafts like that keeps at least every day food on the table. Thank you, John. Thanks for coming here.
I appreciate it. Okay, pleasure. May all living beings have a joy and happiness and cause of happiness and cause of joy. And thinking in my mind, just like I said, intention, think this has been gone billion years, the sound, right? And you send that kind of message. A trip to Pema Karpo usually results in a rare find along with a bit of Buddhist wisdom imparted by the owner. We'll be right back. Returning now to City Stream from Kabul Afghan Restaurant in Wallingford, and joining us is the owner, Wally Karzada. Welcome to City Stream. Pleased to meet you. You know, you came from Afghanistan to New York City in 1972 to study, and originally the plan was for you to go back to Afghanistan, and Absolutely. that didn't happen. What happened? Because the political changes in Afghanistan, or the communist regime, I could not go back to that country. It wasn't regime. safe, right? It wasn't safe, and plus I was going to be put in army to fight my own people by the communist regime, and later on, as you know, the Russians directly. So... Fortunately, everyone in your family was safe. Yes. Nothing bad yes. happened. No, no. And you had to adjust to life in the U.S., and eventually you moved to Seattle and opened this restaurant. Why did you come here? After my studies were over, I came for Seattle to Seattle for a vacation. I had an uncle who lived in Seattle that came to visit. And my wife and I loved this place. Yeah. And I thought this is a place to live. So we moved out here. Yeah, it's a beautiful, you fell in love with it like many trans The mountains, do. especially that I'm used to. Because you know Afghanistan is a mountainous country. And, and when I looked at the city in the morning, I got up. I was lucky enough to see it. It was the month of July. And the sun <laughs> was beautiful. everywhere, and I saw the mountains, and I felt so home. Sure. Yeah. yeah, that's so great. And one of the things you wanted to do in this restaurant, besides provide delicious meals, is to sort of give people an introduction to the culture of Afghanistan, yes. right? Absolutely. Why is that important? Well, I'm doing my part in my society, in my circle. I introduce food as a part of a culture, important part of the culture of a any society. Absolutely. So uh, here I am. And and you're also giving back. I understand that you are employing two Afghani refugees yes. as part of the yeah. restaurant. Yes, yes, I have. They were brought here as a refugee uh, by uh, uh, some churches in Kirkland. And uh, I met them and I asked them to have, if they would like to have a job with me. And they are with me. And they're also, also studying, going to college, and so. That's great. What do you want people who come here to your restaurant to sort of get from the whole experience? Well, when they want to come to a Kabul restaurant, they will experience the authentic Afghan cuisine, which is a very good cuisine, I, can, I have to admit. <laughs> sure. It's delicious. If you say so yourself. It's delicious. Sure, that's true. And, um, been in, a, in this community in Wallingford for 27 years, you get to know a lot of very, very interesting and wonderful people. And that's a joy in life for me. I meet different people from different walk of life. And we talk about food and other things, politics, food. Sure. And you're such an important part of this community. Thank you so much for being part Thank of Thank you show. for coming here. Thank you for interest. Appreciate it. Thank you. What's happening in Syria? We left because of because we were fearful of the terrorism. And next on City Stream, from refugees to Seattle residents, this family escapes a dire situation after their homeland 
is devastated by war. Welcome back to Kabul Afghan Cuisine. And look what Wally has brought, some kebabs and eggplant. And this is the Afghani version of baba ganoush. You know, for centuries, Afghanistan was at the center point of a trade route between India, China, and the Middle East. And that, of course, influenced its cuisine and its rich culture. In recent years, though, Afghanistan has been battered by war and internal strife, forcing millions to flee. Recently, only Syria has produced a greater refugee population, and some of them are choosing to settle here in Seattle. I recently caught up with one Syrian family who has endured struggles few of us can imagine. Misal, Bina. Mubarak. Misal. Translator. Iyad and Safa never imagined they'd be here. Halfway across the globe, using a mobile translator. Naam. Yes, making textiles and sold. Okay, both. Letting their kids watch American TV and eat American snacks. <laughs> but what do you do when your old life literally vanishes? This is all the remains of their once vibrant block in Aleppo, a city of five million that was one of the most beautiful and historic in Syria. This is all there is to the house they once called home. And see the textile shop that Iyad and his father had built from scratch to support their families? It, too, is now just dust. Hundreds of thousands have died in the Syrian civil war, and millions have fled. Before Iyad and Safa left for Turkey in 2012, life was as bad as any war movie. We lived in complete fear um, and complete shock. There was no electric power, no water, and uh, my daughter Huda uh, was really young at that time and she needed milk, but all the food necessities were missing. Also, like all the doctors, uh, the ones that are very competent in Aleppo, like fled, and my wife was pregnant with my second daughter and she needed a C-section. So Safa and Iyad felt they had no choice but to take bare essentials in two suitcases and leave the country they loved. Iyad would later learn he lost an aunt, cousins, his little brother, another price of war. Uh, six months dead. Yeah. It was pretty shocking what happened in Syria. I never imagined that the government would like shoot down the like innocent civilians who went like to the street to protest. It was unimaginable. This is our interpreter, Mital Dabaj, who also fled Syria in 2012. As a software engineer, she had the good fortune to land a job at Microsoft, and the company helped her get an H-1B visa for specially skilled workers. As she awaited her green card, she began hearing stories of friends back home, and they touch her to the core. For me personally, because um, when I left Syria, I was like here in a safe place, and um, my friends were sorry, though, again. She feels so lucky because so many others, like Iyad, settling temporarily in Turkey, was scrounging for any job he could gas station attendant, restaurant worker, vegetable seller, anything to support his family, while they applied for the chance to come to the U.S., to Seattle, as political refugees. That vetting process is the toughest that any foreign national undergoes. About two years of background checks, fingerprinting, biometrics, and interrogation by multiple federal agencies. Finally, in 2017, they made it to Seattle. The fact is, refugees already go through a very strenuous, extreme process. 
Joaquin Wee works for Seattle's Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs. He notes that refugees are not immigrants coming for economic benefits. Refugees are escaping political persecution or wars. He says the evidence does not support fears that refugees are terrorists. Stats show that in terms of uh, terrorist activities, to date, uh, no one that's done a um, harmful terrorist activity has actually gone through a refugee program. That's just, there has not been a link there. We are Muslims and Islam means salam, which means peace. And it's a religion of peace and what's happening in Syria. We left because, of, because we were fearful of the terrorism, and, but we're not terrorists. Let's look at the bigger picture. Since 2010, Washington state has taken in about 17,000 refugees. We now rank eighth in the nation. The biggest waves of refugees have come from East Africa, Ethiopia, Somalia, Eritrea, also Russia and Ukraine, and more recently, the Middle East, Iraq, Iran, and Syria. Like Iyad and Safa, more refugees have settled in the Seattle area than elsewhere in the state. Yet there are only about 30 Syrian families here. Matal has helped all of them resettle. They're all normal people, very loving and very caring and very generous, and they have so much to offer um, to Seattle and to the rest of the United States. My husband uh, wants to uh, find a job where he can be able to provide for our family and we don't want to depend on help from others or aid from others. We want to just be independent and be part of society here. The main thing is for my family and for my children to grow up in a safe place. Their dreams, their hopes are in the end so utterly normal. Refugees want what anyone moving to Seattle has wanted, to go from newcomer to local to earn the right to be called Seattleites. Washington State takes in about 3,000 refugees a year, most of them settling in the Seattle area. And in 2016, the city reaffirmed itself as a welcoming city for refugees and immigrants, becoming part of a coalition of cities and groups focusing on inclusion. We'll be right back. And that wraps up this episode of City Stream from Kabul Afghan Cuisine Restaurant. If you would like to find out more about the many cultural, arts, and lifestyle programs that we produce here at Seattle Channel, just go to our website at seattlechannel.org. I'm Josephine Chang. Thank you for watching. Now, where shall I start? <laughs> Yum.